All right, I should like uh, start or wait for the other project to dry and finish filming that before I start a new video, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, I get asked a lot about how I make my little art paper clips. And so we're gonna do a DIY today. Um, and I'm gonna show you how. So I start with wood shapes as a base. These are um, purchased pre-cut like this from your craft store. I generally get these at Michael's. Um, they have lots of different shapes in their um, craft department, usually near the like pom-poms and feathers and things. They also have a few different shapes over in their wood department. So look around and see what they have. Generally the ones in the um, sort of inexpensive crafts department are cheaper. Um, than the ones you're going to find in the wood department. If you can find them, there are such a thing as wood ATC cards, of which I have done a few because I found some old ones in my stash. I haven't seen those recently at the craft store. That doesn't mean they don't make them. It just means I haven't seen them. Um, you need a paper clip. This is a three inch clip, which is my preferred size. I do have two inch clips and I have a bigger four inch clip that I use sometimes. I get these on Amazon. I get, I generally have a variety of colors around. I prefer this shape clip in the different sizes or this little baby one that's cute. So I'm going to link um, the, my favorite clips that I order on Amazon. I'll, I'll put links for as much stuff as I can in the video description. Um, the, this clip and this clip were both purchased on Amazon. Um, these were from Michaels and the big four inch clips. I don't remember where I got them I do know they have them on Amazon. So if I can remember I'll link them And I have a tray like that way of small parts Which I have shown on video before that has different little cubbies and compartments and bins and baskets on it That has just random stuff from my collection of small art bits um, This is actually a piece of stencil waste um, I do sell st uh, the cut pieces of stencil waste from having my stencils cut. Um, I sell packs of it in my Etsy shop. Um, th this little piece has been floating around. I actually found it on the floor of the garage. Uh, they sort of are like glitter. Uh, if you craft with glitter, you know what I'm about to say. Uh, with glitter, you find it literally everywhere. You start crafting with glitter and it's everywhere. Everywhere in your house, everywhere in your car, in your clothing, like on your person, it's everywhere. Um, <laughs> these little pieces of stencil waste, they start to migrate and they start to get everywhere. And this one I found on the floor of the garage, so that's pretty funny. Um, I finally brought it upstairs and I thought I would try to use it today. Um, I have lots of painting papers and things around, so I pull from those. These are like the current batch of paper and fabric waste. Um, and then I have the Tyvek. So I keep getting asked about the Tyvek. Now, I don't throw any product packaging away generally. And when I do, I re try to recycle it, um, especially Tyvek envelopes, priority mail Tyvek envelopes here in the US um, are great for this. You can also buy plain white Tyvek envelopes at your office supply store. Tyvek is sort of a, um, it's a plasticky impregnated paper. I don't know what it's impregnated with, nylon or something. It's hard to rip. If you've ever gotten a Tyvek envelope, it's one of those ones that's really, like you can't rip it. Um, this is great for holding your paper clip on the back of your piece. Um, and that's what I use it for. So I take the envelope that I've gotten in the mail and I cut it into strips. Uh, and then I use it on the back of my paper clips to attach the clip to the clip, to the, Attach the clip to the wood piece. Um, what else? Um, I use a lot of tacky glue. If it's a non-porous object, then I attach it with E6000. Those are the two kinds of glue that you're gonna need. Sometimes I cover the back with um, painting papers or something before I put the clip on. Sometimes I don't. Um, it just depends on the mood that I'm in. I always put words on the front. I am. Um, uh, more of a Lolly Palooza described me in her paperclip group as a visual storyteller, and she, that's not too far off the mark. I really like incorporating words or thoughts or feelings into my work, literally. And so, 
A lot of artists do it figuratively or with color. I love to do it literally. And from day one almost, words um, are incorporated into most of my work. Um, the paper clips are included in that statement. So I'm going to fast forward through my process and stop where I feel like I need to explain anything. I'm gonna work on two paper clips because I didn't do one yesterday, so I've gotta do two. And I'm gonna see what, I don't have a plan. I don't know how they're gonna turn out. We'll both find out together and uh, let's get it done. All right, I'll be back.
Okay, I'm, ge I'm generally very impatient with these to let them dry completely before I do some trimming and take some social media pictures. Um, just FYI. So once they've been clipped for a while and I think the tacky glue is you know all dry or mostly dry, um, then I trim the excess um, Tyvek off the back. Um, some of you are probably asking why tacky glue and not some other kind of glue like the E6000. I will tell you from doing paper clips upside down and having to take the Tyvek off because um, I have to turn the paper clip around, tacky glue works just fine. So I just give the Tyvek a little trim. Sometimes I put the paper clip on to start with and I wrap the Tyvek around to the front and some most of the time I don't do that. Once I have it trimmed then I take some pictures and then I'll reclamp it and leave it overnight. Sorry, that's my computer. People are messaging me. The challenge, of course, to doing this when it's wet is you don't want to bump anything off. So once I do that, then I take the paper clips one at a time. I use my cell phone to take some photos. I make sure I have my LED um, studio light on, which I do right now. And I actually turn off the overhead light because it gives some crazy reflections. I'm going to move this over here because of the stain here that I got here from the alcohol ink. I take the front. Take the back. I like to put it on a piece of paper. And show that it really does work on a piece of paper. Okay, I'm going to do that to both of them. And yes, I usually get paint and glue and all kinds of fun stuff all over my phone. <laughs> Before somebody asks, I'm constantly cleaning my phone case. <laughs> There's always interesting spots of things on the phone case. Wipe off the excess glue right there. There we go. Okay. And put it on the piece of paper. There you go. So that's how I make my art clips. Easy peasy. I hope it gives you some ideas of what you can do. There is a paperclip art group over in Facebook. I will link them in the description below if you're interested in giving the whole idea of these art clips a try. There's no right way or wrong way to do them. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do them. You don't have to do them how I do, but this is my process and this is what I do. I hope you can take something away from it. It is a great way to not only um, create some um, um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to create some interesting art, some visual journaling, um, visual art, um, but it's also it's a great way to use up all those little tiny bits and pieces you've got laying around your art room, which is what got me started doing it. So anyway, this is it. I hope it gives you some ideas. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down below uh, in the comments on the video. My social media links, the Facebook group, anything else I've mentioned, including my happy mail address, are in the video description. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And above all, go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.